In case you forgot, this is Charlie. Hi! This is Shed. Hi! <laughs> Previously on Arcade Spirits, uh, we were about to get murdered by some five-year-olds. Yeah, we were about to get murdered by five-year-olds. It was gonna be horrifying. Um, so we're gonna go to those children. Uh-huh. I weave my way through waves of children towards the skee-ball machines. One little girl sitting at the end of a skee-ball ramp, crying. No parent in sight to settle her, so the task falls to me. Oh no. We're not good with children. We're not good with children. I'm guessing I should be more cautious about this sort of thing, what with lawsuit happy parents lurking over by the vending machines, ignoring their kids, but... Floor tenant Levi decided to take the case all the same. Hey, hey, my name's Levi, and I work here at the arcade. What's wrong? Can I help? Her sobbing pauses as she looks up to me. I lost my ticket. Someone stole them from me. I played and played and won a bunch of them, but when I put them down and I was talking to a friend and now they're gone! I glance around, but in a sea of kids it's impossible to tell who the thief could be. I don't even have any more tokens to play with. I spent them all on skee-ball. Mood. Yeah. And my tickets are all gone now. Wah! Very convincing crying. Thank you. Easy, easy. We'll figure this out. Somehow. Somehow. Somehow, some way. Although I've got no clue where to even start, to be honest. Maybe there was a witness to the crime? Percy I guess would have had the a crimes. Good yes, the crimes of the Redemption game area based on where Moopy's positioned. Gavin has the ticket desk, a veritable crow's nest for the whole arcade. He could have spotted something. Or I could just bend the rules and solve this directly. Hmm. Don't give them replacement tickets. No. Do we want to deal with this quietly, or do we want to follow arcade policy? Well, the question is, would Percy also have been paying attention long enough to notice? No, Percy was playing Moopy. Yeah. You get to start off this round. Oh, fuck. Yeah, I'm gonna give you the hard decision. Ah. Uh, I think we have to go with Gavin. Yay, Gavin! I don't think Percy would have seen anything. Yeah. Nope, not gonna mess around with this one. A theft is serious business. Wait, right here, okay, kid? I'll go get help. We'll get to the bottom of this, I promise. Okay. I duck through the crowd, weaving my way back to the ticket desk. Hey, Gavin, that girl over there. Boy with the red hair, curly playing Frogger. He took her tickets when she wasn't looking. Wait, you saw? Of course. What of it? So do we bring it up to his parents or the cops? <laughs> Wait, you knew when you didn't do anything to help No, Gavin's got shit to do. Let's not start a ruckus. How about we replace them? Mm. I think we need to call the cops. The cops? The cops. <laughs> okay, so how do we deal with this one? Do we go confront the Brett's parents or go grab the cops or just work them over under the hot lights? Honestly, I'd suggest letting it go. If you confront the child, he'll clam up and refuse to ever admit wrongdoing. And the parents can be twice as immature, I've found. Right now, I just want to keep the peace. One girl crying is less of a disturbance than the boy throwing a tantrum. The way he stands there, so stoic and uncaring, while that girl in pink just sobs. It's not right. I mean, seriously, it's not right. But he's my boss. How hard do I want to push this? Gavin, have a heart. What makes her sadness less important than that boy's potential tantrum? I call bull... I'm that. I thought you were all about supporting others' dreams. Can't say I like it, but it's your call. I wash my hands of this one. Yes. Come on, Gavin. So you'll let one customer feel like crap just to avoid another customer? Maybe feel like... Maybe to avoid having another customer maybe feel like crap? A thief, may I add. There's keeping the peace and there's allowing suffering just because it's a path of least resistance. We're losing a customer today regardless. I'd rather not break a little girl's heart to do it and let a bully learn he can do what he wants. At first it looks like he's gonna chew me out for standing up to him. Does that really but look like a man who's gonna chew you out? That looks like a man who can't chew anyone out. <laughs> yeah, that looks like a man who's tired. You think me a monster? Of course I feel bad about this. I feel bad for her. And he shouldn't get away with it. I'm just trying to pr protect the arcade as a whole. Then do it. Protect the arcade. By protecting the gamers and, and their, their dreams. dreams. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Besides, like a stress relief valve, yawning open and closed. We got a Gavin point! Yay! Your 
you're right, of course. Focusing on the big, big picture does tend to leave me apathetic to each individual brush stroke. My apologies, Levi. I'm lucky I had you to put me back on track. Your predecessor wouldn't have stood up to me like this and shown me how wrong I was. Aw, oh, Gavin. My predecessor didn't do much more than sit here. You got real bored. Now, let's sort this out properly. Oh. Oh, yeah, that's that a... looks like a bully. Gavin walks right up to the kid who's busy hopping a frog around in traffic. Wouldn't mind seeing this kid go play in traffic myself. <gasps> Levi! Damn, Levi, we're not supposed to think that about children. We're not supposed to... S Levi's we're not... not saying it, we're just thinking it. Okay. <clears throat> Boy. What do you want? Can't help but notice the roll of tickets in your pocket. Big winner, are you? The biggest? Got them all playing uh, that spinny color game over there, see? Really? It's funny, see? I own that game. May I see your roll, please? I don't want to show you. Well, I can see the end poking out of your pocket there. And I can see the serial number on the ticket starts with a 1. Which is interesting, because the roll I loaded into the color spinner, it started with a 2. Meaning those tickets were one playing skee-ball. Specifically by that girl over there. And you took them. You're a liar. Leave me alone. I'll yell for my mom. Do you really want to risk having your mom believe me instead of you? Instead, how about you give me the tickets and walk away? At first, the kid looks like he's going to shriek bloody murder, but a few nervous glances at his mother, busy munching chips by the vending machine, changed his mind. Take them. I don't want them anyway. He angrily stomps away, presumably to go play some other game on the other side of the arcade. Aww, you did it! You found my tickets! The girl actually hugs me. Well, hugs my leg anyway. <laughs> thanks so much. Thanks, and thanks. Now then, let's get you your prize. What is it you wanted? Crayons. Those we have. Levi, I'll take it from here. Look at that man. That is a happy man! That is a very squishy man, and I love him. <sighs> He's a teddy bear. Ooh, that's a fuzzy happy feeling right there. But no time to rest on my laurels. I've got other arcade dreams to defend. Right, that there's that's that sorted out. But the other two situations are about to spin out of control. I've only got time to deal with one of them. Which one? <laughs> oh fuck. So there's two kids fighting over a box of cupcakes near Naomi and Ashley, and there's an angry adult shouting at a kid near Teo and Queen Bee. Okay. I think we need to deal with the angry adult. That's more of a like actual threat. Okay. The sounds of hardship call to me from the Fast Cars 5 racing game. Shouting adults and crying children are never particularly good signs, and I hope beyond hope that I can take this on. I shake the discomfort off. Now's not the time to doubt myself. I need to find out what's going on and stat. stat. As I get close- And stat? Okay. Like, I need to find out what's going on- Stat. And stat. I thought it was just stat. It is stat. Shh. There's an ant. Okay. I don't know. Moving on. As I get closer to the revving of engines and the clacking of shifting gears, I see a grown woman berate a cowering boy. Oh, she looks like it's someone named Karen. I know. I, I- I didn't! Admit it. I know you did, you brat. You manipulated my precious son to put his tokens in your game. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm so, so sorry. Children like you are the absolute worst. Garbage. These are Jesus like six-year-olds. These are six-year-olds. He's wearing a collared shirt. No, look at- Oh my god, he put his hat on backwards. He's wearing a button-up. Ma'am, keep your voice down. There's no need to shout. At a child, no less. What's going on here? Silence. This jerk of a boy told my sweet, my sweetest, beyond sweet, Josh, that he should put his own tokens into the racing machine so he could play it for free. Josh earned those tokens from his own allowance, and I won't let some devil child steal his money. Oh, she's a Catholic mom. Okay, Karen. Let's just take a moment to calm down, okay? Before I say anything else, I spot Queen Bee and Teo out of the corner of my eye. Queen Bee looks infuriated, and Teo has buried his face in his hand. Actually, now that I stop and think about it, they might have some insight. The racing games are right next to Showtime stage. Teo probably had a good vantage point of the whole thing if he was dancing on stage. And just by the way Queen Bee's browser are furrowed, I can tell something is not sitting right with her. Oh, that woman knows everything. Oh, yeah, she does. I can ask one of them for their help, or I could try to solve this one by myself. So I could consult Queen Bee, ask Teo, or do Detective Levi. I feel like Queen Bee 
feel like she would know. But also, she would definitely... She also scares us, though. She, she would escalate the situation. Mm-hmm. I think Teo's the better option. Yeah, Teo, Teo de-escalates. That's his thing. Yes. Teo was right next to the action when it went down. I decided to check in with him. Ma'am, I know you're upset right now, but if you can please stop shouting, we can get this all settled, Teo. I refuse to calm down until this child has been appropriately punished. <laughs> that such disrespect is tolerated in this arcade is appalling. Oh, I'm giving you the worst online reviews. Teo jumps down from the stage and approaches the shouting woman. He puts his hands up. Simmer down. Simmer down. This can all be explained with science. Really? I mean, right, of course. Teo, by all means, elaborate. Teo walks past us and right up to the Fast Cars 5 game. Casually slumps in the driver's seat and then motions for us to come near. Let me show you both something. Teo points at the car console. It's got a wheel, which is fantastic and totally necessary for a driving game. Pedals, gear shift, and so on. But the feature Teo draws our attention to are the two coin slots, which are vertically stacked, one on top of the other. Okay, so this is where you drop your tokens in to play the game. We lost the dialogue. <laughs> we lost the dialogue. It's gone forever. I'm so sorry. It's but the, the other game slots right below it. Yeah, that was that was the point. Uh-huh. Which game does the top slot belong to? The right hand or the left hand game? The top? The top would belong to, to the, the to the left. left. The left. It's obviously the left one, right? Uh I'm, I mean correct. Of course not, fool. It's the right one. Levi is correct. Look, we know our directions. What? Preposterous! See? These import games can be confusing. I'm sure your son just put his token in the wrong slot. Common mistake, really. Happens all the time. Considering how confused I was, I could see how a small child would be just as, if not more, confused. Honestly, mine was just a lucky guess. I give Tio a grateful look, happy that the crisis has been dealt with. The frustrated customer will probably, would undoubtedly apologize for yelling at that boy Does now. that look like a woman who's going to apologize? No, not at all. How dare you imply that my precious Josh was wrong. I can't believe the gall of some people. Josh! Josh, get over here! This kid does not deserve this. He does not. We're leaving this horrible arcade. I love this voice. It's arcade. Like, it's very Squidward-like. <laughs> right now. Oh, well, didn't see that one coming. The woman scoops up her child and storms out the front door. I don't think we'll see her or her son anymore, and frankly, I'm cool with that. Once they're gone, Teo looks at me from the driver's seat and shrugs. There's just no pleasing some people. I feel sorry for her son. It's no way to treat a kid. I was sprightly and happy to meet her, shifted slightly, eyes glazed over as he looks into the distance. I haven't seen Teo act like this before. You met him 20 minutes ago. You really? You just met him. Also, is anyone else concerned about the quote-unquote demon child? Where the fuck did he go? He went off to go cry in a corner. Okay, I feel like we should be checking on him. It's No, we, we obviously have to deal with Teo and, and his, his trauma. His dramatic backstory. Yes. He just looks so upset. I wonder if I should check in with him. Sorry, I just now noticed that his chains are in neon, green, and teal. Yeah. I'm gonna go for empathy. Okay. I know it's really none of my business, but I should make sure Teo's okay. It seems like he can really empathize with this kid's plight. Hey, everything alright? You need anything? After pausing for a moment, the fire returns behind his eyes. Yeah, I'll be okay. Just reminded me of how I'd get treated by teachers, notably. I'd space out in class, daydreaming, and they'd rake me over the coals for it just to assert authority. Total overkill. It really bums me out to see adults mistreat kids this way, you know? I'd like to treat people with respect, even when they're in the wrong. Like you saw just now, with that woman. I appreciate you taking some time to ask me, you know? It shows you've got respect, too. And empathy. You're a kind person, Levi. Aww. We love that empathy. But I'm not that important. No! <laughs> you are, though. You're so important. You have a side braid and everything. I know. You should make sure that boy's safe and sound. Okay, thank you. <sighs> I'm headed back to Showtime stage. Holler if you need anything. I give a quick wave to Teo as he returns to his game. After poking around a bit, I managed to find the kid still shaking up from the whole ordeal. Yeah, he was called a demon child. <sighs> yeah. Hey, sorry about all that. 
Are you gonna be okay? I- I think so. I swear he didn't do anything. The other kid, he just came up out of nowhere and dropped his token in my slot. After I lost, I got off the game and offered it to him. He just ran away. And then that woman approached you and started yelling. The boy nods, wiping his snotty nose on his shirt. No, not the shirt! <laughs> uh-huh. Well, if it's any consolation, the bad lady's gone. And I don't think she's ever gonna come back. The boy, cheeks still streaked with tears, lets a smile spread on his face. Th thank you. And tell that nice man thanks for sticking up for me, too. Aww. I nod and the boy scurries off and rejoins some of his other friends. Two problems in the can. Now to deal with that cupcake problem, I- Oh. Uh-oh. Oh no. Too late. The vintage Midway cabin Naomi just finished fixing up. It's covered in icing. Oh, oh fuck. no. Looks like Ashley's costume is gonna need dry cleaning, too. I shoot them a helpless look and shrug. Hey, Levi. Kinda wish it was pink icing. Then nobody would notice. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I wasn't quick enough. You still helped out. I saw you with those other kids. You're a natural. I think things are winding down. I think things are winding down anyway. Why not take a break? And then I'll swap with you and take a break myself afterwards. Yeah, okay. Sounds good. Honestly, I'm kind of worn out. Ashley's right. I need to step away from this craziness, if only for a few minutes. That kid's birthday parties for you. Yeah. After a silent nod from Gavin to confirm it's cool with him, I slip away. Headed for the employee lounge. The employee lounge. There's nothing in here. There's an old soda machine and four TVs stacked on top of each other. And pink one there, baby. And a coffee pot. As, oh, that as is usual. Empty. That is empty. Shh, it's fine. What a day. Quirky coworkers, diehard pro gamers, volatile kids getting into volatile situations. I'd say it's a recipe for wackiness or some such cliche. <laughs> <laughs> but nothing is an easily dismissed cliche when it's happening to you directly. Frankly, I'm exhausted. I drop down into one of the cheap folding metal chairs in the employee break room, groaning and rolling my head back to try and work the kinks out of my sore shoulders. And spot an upside down kid. What? Huh. Oh, wait. I'm the one leaning backwards. Oh, okay. I set up the turnaround instead. With this game, I wouldn't have put yeah, a pass for the like, spider child. Cool. Better. Wait, what's a kid doing back here? Hey, uh... I think he was hoping I wouldn't notice him. Um, hi. Hi, and you are? Mikey. Okay, that's a start. Hi, Mikey. My name's Levi. So, what are you doing back here? Oh my god, are we gonna meet a parent? I think we might. Oh my god, are we gonna get to romance a single parent? Yes! I'm here for it. The dream. <laughs> This is an employees only area. Wait, there's a keypad. How'd you get Wait, in? Is, maybe this is Gavin's like nephew or something. Oh, yes. Maybe Gavin's a father. Nope. <laughs> the, the guy at the desk dropped this. He holds out a piece of paper with the door code written on it. Huh. Score one for Ashley's wild storytelling being more fact than fiction. Okay. But you can't stay back here. It's, well, I don't see any knives or stabbing implements left out in the open, so I guess it's technically safe, but... Please don't send me back out there. Well, this is curious. And concerning. Yeah, I lean in so we can be on the same eye level. <laughs> Something wrong? You can tell me. I work here. I'm the person who solves problems. No problems. Just... I don't want to go out there. Don't you want to play with your friends? And he gives me the most cynical, bitter laugh I've ever heard out of a kindergartner. I don't got any friends. I don't know anybody here. My family just moved to the city, and before that, we lived in another city. And more before that, but I was too little to remember. Oh my god, we are gonna be a parent. Oh god, we're gonna meet a parent! Mom told me to come to the party anyways, and I didn't wanna, but she took me anyway. And then she left, cause she gotta work. Working mom. mom. Yes. New kid in town, huh? He nods mutely. Still, I should have busted him there and then, brought him back out to the party where the other parents could supervise him. I should have told Gavin. I should have enforced the rules of the arcade. Okay, kid. I won't tell on you. If you want to stay back here for the rest of the party, I'll keep you company. Thanks. You, you really won't tell my mom? Nope. Why? 
I thought you were gonna make me go. You're an adult, like mom. Oh, bold assumption, kiddo. Bold, bold assumption. You think we're an adult? Do you see the way we're dressed? We're in a hoodie. Ooh, hoodies. <sighs> hey, I wasn't an, always an adult. I was a kid once. The new kid in town, in fact. Backstory. Backstory. Oh, I was just thinking John Mulaney sketch. <laughs> I'm new in town. <laughs> and it gets worse. worse. You were the new kid? Yeah, although for me, that started happening back when I was ten. Again, then again, moving from town to town, school to school, never really making any friends. Not for years. Mom and Dad kept losing jobs and taking new ones, worse ones. They'd be working all day long, too tired when they came home to do much of anything. What is this curse? Yeah, are you guys- are you, like, legitimately cursed? I think they might be cursed to just constantly be losing their jobs. Here we go. So does this mean that- What does that mean? Does this mean we get to break a family curse? Does this- I think- I think so? Okay, okay. After years and years of this, I stopped hoping things would get better. I decided I'd just take what I could get. Why are I'd we- go with the flow. Why, why are we emotionally traumatizing this child? I think we're sharing our trauma so that he doesn't feel alone. Okay. Like, we're sharing our okay. pain so that he understands that it gets better, says the adult wearing a hoodie working in an arcade. Yeah, he's in kindergarten. What does that mean? Thank you. It means you don't care. Some things are good, some things are bad, but you don't care. You just do what you have to do without really being sad over it. But that sounds so sad. You weren't sad. It's sad to never care about anything. Right? Right? <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Blinks. I guess I was sad. I just told myself I wasn't gonna be sad, even though I really was. And that's called denial. <laughs> and then I bite my tongue. Hard. Mood. Because my little involuntary trip down the Merle Lane was not helping this kid out. Wouldn't have helped little Levi out if an adult did this for me. So instead, I decided to be the adult that little Levi would have needed. Okay, hey, could be totally worse. Aliens, Aliens could attack. attack. It won't always be this bad. Life has ups and downs. Your mommy loves you, that's why she, she works, works so hard. hard. But this won't be you, right? You're a tough kid. You take the time you need, I'll stay with you. I think it's your turn. Okay. What would little Levi have needed? Did little Levi need empathy? Did they need logic? Did they need laughter? Or did they just need somebody to sit there and understand? I don't know. Little Levi was a lot sadder than this kid. I'm leaning towards they just needed someone to sit there and understand. Okay. You take the t you know what helps me when I'm sad? Peace and quiet. That's why you came back here, right? All the beeps and boops, the kids <laughs> laughing, all the craziness, it's too much. But that's okay. If you need a quiet moment, I'll be right here with you. Okay. We sit there in silence for a time. I flip through my phone, but only half-heartedly. I want to be ready if he wants to talk. For a few minutes, he's okay with tugging at his shoelaces and looking at the floor. I don't know what to do. <laughs> oh. Hmm? Everybody's having fun. I don't know how. Oh. Well, baby, I don't know how to make friends and have fun. I can't even try. I just mess it up. Oh, baby. Oh, Mikey. It's tricky, that's for sure. But there's a good thing about going with the flow, too. It's not always sad. Think of it like, okay, imagine a cup of water. Huh? A cup of water. What happens when you pour it into a bowl? Is the water still shaped like a cup? That's silly. It's bowl-shaped. Yes, bowl-shaped. Bowl-shaped. Exactly. People can be like water, too. You know how to be quiet and peaceful. Now you just need to know how to flow. Watch the kids out there. Watch who they talk to. Listen to what they talk about. And when you hear something you can talk about, when it looks like they want to talk but have nobody to talk to, that's when you can have some fun. Is this how Levi made friends? By changing their personality to fit the situation? Yeah, isn't that how all kids make friends? No. <laughs> I promise you, some of the kids out there are just as sad. 
They want to have fun and don't know how. You could be the friend they need. And Mikey's smiling. Not a big goofy oh. grin. Not the high of happiness. Just simple understanding. Why is this kid so grown up? <laughs> He's five. He might be six. He's a kindergartner. That could be six. You're right. He's five to six. He's five to six. Okay. Just don't know why he's so grown up. I know, right? Mm hmm Okay. Maybe it's because he's wearing a button-up. <gasps> Maybe. Okay. I'll go back to the party. <gasps> and I'll be a cup of water! Oh. Sweetheart! Baby! We love you! I take his hand to lead him out back, back out to the main room. I don't even care if I meet his mom. This was a great experience. This really was. And he goes, and, and off, off he goes. goes. I'm not fooling myself. I know I haven't fixed all of Mikey's problems. I'm no child psychologist. That was entirely me flying by the seat of my pants. But for one moment there, I was able to help someone in the same crappy situation I found myself long ago. Fifteen years ago. Everything changed. No more family vacations, no more arcade visits. Then we couldn't afford them and they couldn't take time off to work. So was this a recent family curse? I think, if, yeah, I think so. Or maybe there was just an economic collapse. This is America. This is America. We think. We, we guess. The whole Car Calder family had to learn to settle, to accept the lot in life we've been dealt, to simply go with the flow. Never hoping, never wanting. Juniper did her best to pull me out of that mire. I'd only known her a few years, one of the few stable times in my life, but she knew the edge I could push to. Now, here I am. Today has been, well, bonkers. Alternately boring and hectic, surreal and way too real. But I can honestly say I'm more alive today than I have been in a very, very long time. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. Levi. Hmm? My emotional voice analysis subroutines, combined with your body language, suggest you are very happy right now. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I am. How did you know? I just told you, silly. I mean, how did you know I'd love this job so much? Oh, that is easy. I didn't. <gasps> Iris! Did you lie to us? I think Iris lied to us. I think Iris lied to us. I think the algorithm lied to us. What? what? I lied. I was 47% sure. Iris lied to us. It worked. She lied to us. The magical space fairy in our phone lied to us. I'm so betrayed. This is why we have trust issues. This is why we have trust issues. This is why we can't trust every magical space fairy in our phone. Mm -hmm. Oh, it has elements that seem to click with your optimal social requirements. A fun atmosphere, spirited co-workers, helping people out, and so on. Also, I cross-referenced your roommate's postings talking about how much you enjoyed arcade visits when you were a kid. Still, 47%. She wasn't even half sure. She wasn't. I'm so betrayed. Iris, why did you do this to us? Iris lied to us. But I was 99.97% sure. That if I said I was 99.97% sure, you would be willing to give it a try. I'm still angry. Another thing to thank Juniper for, I guess. You're a very weird little app, you know? I try to be. Cool, Iris. We're being emotionally manipulated by our own phone. Yeah, thanks for lying to us to help us get this job, I guess. What's the world coming to when you can't even trust the magical space fairy in your phone? No one knows. When the car's pulling up in the parking lot, it looks like the party's over. It's just about closing time for the arcade anyway. Most of the gamers have filed out by now if they hadn't already fled the tidal wave of kitties. My first impulse is to go bug- go- Just to go bug Gavin about Thank my Thank you. <laughs> but eh, that can wait. I'd rather go help someone with the tidying up, or maybe see how our VIP gamers are doing. Not enough time to run around checking in with everyone, though. Who do I want to hang out with? Gavin's tapping at his tablet and frowning. I guess I'll go right to him. Ashley's quietly repairing her costume. Maybe she could use company. Nicole's prying gum out of a coin Naomi. slot. Naomi. One day, prying gum out of a coin slot and looks ready to cry. Queen Bee's packing up her gear, ready to go home. Teo's cooling down with some fast cars five before the day's over. Percy's finally finished his movie game and is ready to leave. <sighs> okay, so we already talked to Gavin and we already talked to Teo. Mm-hmm. I'm leaning towards either Percy or Naomi. Yeah. Do you want to talk to Percy? I feel like we'll have time to talk to Naomi. 
Yeah, but Naomi looks like she's crying. Yeah. Okay, let's let's take care of Naomi. Mm-hmm. Naomi definitely looks like she could use a hand. Someone's jammed bright pink of bubblegum into a coin slot, and she's trying to clear the sticky mess out. How could they? How could they do this to a poor innocent little Qbert? Hey, need a hand? Oh, thank goodness. Yeah, work on the second pair slot for me. I've got swabs and stuff in my kit there, grab what you need. Honestly, the nerve of those kids. No respect at all for these games. Children have no respect for anything. No, except they're stuffed animals. Mm -hmm. Games aren't like chew-proof machine washable baby toys. They're delicate and deserve love and care. Yeah, we don't realize that till we're like 15. Uh-huh, and we don't really actually start caring till we're like 20. Yeah. But, oh, Levi, this is the wrong thing to say. This is the wrong thing to say. But they are toys, right? Well, yeah, I mean, of course. Just, you know, they're also works of art. I know not everybody sees it that way. Back in the 80s, operators would just just throw away games that didn't perform well anymore. In the end, an arcade has to make money. That means using and abusing a game until it's time to put it out to pasture. But I don't have to like it, right? Definitely not. Stand up for game rights. The kids had a lot of fun. They're not all mean. How long does a game last, realistically? Oh, this is my turn. It is your turn. Oh, fuck. We're not standing up for game right. <laughs> We're not starting the robot revolution. This is not Detroit Become Human. I don't think the games have feelings anyway. Yeah. I think I really like the heart one. Uh-huh, I like the heart one too. Oh, fuck. I can click things. You almost stood up for game rights. <laughs> Nothing justifies del deliberately trashing a game like this, but if it helps, the party was a, su was a success. Everyone had fun playing your wonderful games. So for every kid who hurt you, you know a dozen more who would thank you. And if they knew you were providing these great games and making sure they stayed playable. Oh, we got a Naomi point! Yeah, yeah, you're right. Kids aren't all bad, of course. I'm not really good with kids. Not like Ashley, but if they learn to love games when they're young, they'll love them all their life, right? You're actually not wrong. It's true. It's very true. It's why we're here. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm still playing Animal Crossing. That's why I still like dating sims and cute little platformer adventures. That's why I still like dress-up games. Dress-up games are very fun. But I do have to be realistic. I know this isn't a museum. We aren't preserving priceless treasures for generations to come. Sometimes I treat it like my little private collection, but really, I do want people to play and enjoy these games, and that does wear them down. In time. As long as I'm here, I'll pick up a game when it wobbles on its feet, dust it off, straighten it up, and send it out there to be played with all over again. With the last of the gum pulled out of the slot, Naomi closes up her toolbox. I should probably pull the Coimax out entirely and give him a good cleaning tomorrow, but I didn't want to let the gum sit overnight. I'm heading home soon. I'll see you tomorrow. Right? You got it, Naomi, I said, not knowing my work schedule. Honestly. Great! I think the work schedule is we come in every day. Or like we cut, or like we at least see the days. Uh huh. It's game logic. Yeah. And she gives me a big hug before bounding off to her workshop. Look at her, she bounds. With things winding down, there's just one last thing to take care of before I'm out the door. I seek out Gavin to handle the remains of the day. It's paperwork time. Paperwork time. Levi. Good work today. Thanks, boss. Sub boss. Gavin will do. I can't say you've been a perfect employee. Oh, shut up, Gavin. <laughs> <laughs> but my standards are impossibly high, so I'll just assume you are as close to perfect as is reasonable. We love a man who manages his expectations. Yeah. We're bad at that. <laughs> we really are. You came to me when dealing with those stolen tickets. Good. I want you to know I'll always be there should you need me, even if I look busy. Normally, I'd have dealt with the angry parents myself, but I was distracted. I've only second-hand accounts of your performance there, as Teo told me everything. Although Teo wasn't staff, I suppose he stepped up to the handle that rude customer with a rational and calm attitude, so I'll consider that handled. Okay, Gavin. I'm pleased to say the sale of Mr. Moopy's Magic Maze for full three grand will indirectly offset quite a few of these costs. I'm glad you consulted me on that, and stuck to your guns on the pricing. Even if I'd be happy to be rid of that relic entirely. Gavin. Gavin. Not everyone's. Okay. No. Why is 
why it's still here is a good question. Was I not clear I wanted it gone? Percy didn't want to break up the family. They're machines, not people. He also didn't want Naomi to be sad. Yes, well, Naomi needs to let go. Needs to learn to let go, I'd say. My goal is to get Gavin and Naomi to at least see each other's sides. Uh-huh. That is my goal. They don't mm -hmm. have to be friends, I just want them to see each other's point of view. Uh-huh. We, we just- we need some social empathy training. Yes. I think that Gavin's bad at that because he stays in his office all day, and Naomi's bad at that because she stays with her machines all day. Uh-huh, and she, she's so wrapped up in her own emotions, and Gavin's so wrapped up in managing his own emotions. Yeah, and managing, like, he needs to learn that, like, there's managing the arcade, but there's also, like, making sure that your employees are happy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Ahem. Are you giving our poor little Levi a hard time, Gavin, dear? Of course. Yes. Miss Francine. I thought you were napping. Naomi's dream matters too, as does the dream of Percy, that poor fellow. Poor? Is it Percy stinking rich? I think it's his turn of phrase. Shh, it's fine. Gavin, I know you mean well, wanting to keep everyone's dreams afloat, but sacrifices made in that name will shatter the dreams of others. Well, that's not what the funplex is all about. Levi, you understand, yes, the reason why. Why am I here? That's the question she asked me during that interview. Aside from her favorite dinosaur. Yes. Now I think I- Oh, and how we do in a zombie apocalypse. Mm -hmm. Now I think I understand. I came here today looking for hope. Hope I could do more with my life than compromise. Settle for what I can get and go with the flow. Everybody I've met today is full of hope. Gamers chasing scores, people following their passions. Nobody here is willing to give up on their dreams. Not even you, Gavin. You know we're better than this, Gavin. We don't settle. We chase after our hopes and dreams, and we won't accept anything less. I see. Levi, Miss Francine, I apologize. It's difficult to balance my idealism against my realism some days, but I know in my heart I need to err on the side of idealism, even if my mind screams in protest. I can assume you are still keen to work here, Levi? I don't even hesitate before replying. Absolutely. Gavin fetches a nearby short stack of forms. Okay, how short, though? Like, actually... Fill these out tonight, hand them in to me first thing in the morning, and welcome to the funplex. Welcome to the family, I'd say. I'm sure you'll fit in just fine, Levi. One bus ride later and it's home again, home again, jiggity jig. Juniper, already home from work, bounds over eagerly, eagerly, bounds over eagerly to interrogate me on my day. So, how'd it go? It went well. Well or well. Really well. Your little app came through, despite being terrifyingly omniscient and just a little bit unnerving. You forgot to mention adorable. That's wonderful. I'm so glad to hear things worked out. And you even came home with a smile. Like when you were a lifeguard. Huh. I guess I am smiling. Interesting. By the way, there's just one teensy-weensy little question I have for you. Why exactly did you order an entire- a giant crate full of pizza bagels? Silence. Um, did I neglect to mention that part of the terms and conditions? On the plus side, I know what I'm having for lunch tomorrow. And that's level one of Arcade Spirits complete. Hey look! You also want a prize. You'll get one of these for every level you clear, plus some extras for various endings and other hidden thingies. Now let's check your score. Ooh. Looks like we're really hitting things off with Naomi. We're proving to be a gentle, sweet, and compassionate soul. Also, you've scored 56,000 points. Nice. Keep talking with people and your score will go up, up, up. Today's pizza fact is Americans approximately... Eat approximately 100 acres of pizza each day, or 350 slices per second. Wow. Do you want to save your game before proceeding to level 2? Yes. Yeah, let's overrate the save. Okay.
Legend HD Gaming. How are you today? Level 2, Chasing Ghosts. Friday at 5, we're doing Christmas D&D one-shot. Um, and by we, I mean me, uh, Shay, or Better Be Kind, Lazy Orchids, Pikachu Star, The Cycle Kraken, and R. Earls. Um, we're all getting together on a Discord, and we're all gonna be doing a one-shot, which will be really fun. So, if you like what we're doing, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and comment below. Thank you guys for watching. It's been a lot of fun tonight. 